Ravens. Why does it say bad? Uh, because it doesn't have enough uh, keyframes, but I think it's working. Uh, let's go back. So people are actually, we are live probably. Um, now where's the chat window again? Arg. Live chat window, I think that's the one. Sorry guys, I'm still uh, struggling with this. Uh, open new live chat window. Okay, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we can see the comments. Um, okay, and it looks like we are live based on the comments. The comments are actually very useful for this because... Well, that's German. I can't read German. No, it says German punctuality. Ah. Um, so we are live, and I think <clears throat> this time I won't have as big a latency as last time because I set the bit rate way low, which is why we're Art just said it's working, so it's got to be working. Yeah. Hey, Art. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to be able to keep up with this. This is moving too fast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I meant to put together a list of uh, questions ahead of time, but John and I were just shooting the breeze all this morning, so uh, I didn't. Uh, and I'm basically talked out, so. Yeah. Sorry, you missed it all. <laughs> Some good stuff, too. We should have recorded it. I don't think we wanted to re would have record wanted that recorded. Some of the... <laughs> um, Okay, uh, enough of the greetings. Uh, let's have some questions. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is John. Don't have a better quality of image? Sorry, no. My I set the bit rate to 400 kilobits per second. That's quite low. My internet is not terribly fast. It's I have a good deal with the ISP that I have, and I don't want to switch. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Yes, hi back to you guys. Uh, those are easy to answer. Hello from Finland. Yes, hello from Luxembourg. Hello from Orlando. Oh, that's a lot more people than I thought. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Finland. <laughs> um, I know there are some questions. Let me see if I can scroll back far enough where there was. Somebody but... just said the grumpiest woodworkers ever. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> What is John doing in this region of Canada? John lives close, close-ish. But what, three, four hundred kilometers? It's a, it's a drive. Yeah. I blame Canada for the slow speed. No, it's because <clears throat> I'm cheap. Uh, who has the most blood in the shop? Hmm. Uh, you get I probably division. got more blood in my body. This is true. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So I got more to lose. 20 seconds delay. That's actually not bad. I measured at 25 seconds during the preview. Uh, when I did the previous one, by the end, it was behind by half an hour. Um, but with a lower resolution, it should be okay delay-wise this time. Why did you meet today? Just because. I actually offered John uh, one of my panther rotors because I have an embarrassing number of them. I have five panther rotors at this point. Three from Cool Deep, so I offered one to John. So I'll be taking one home with me. And maybe it'll appear in a video at some point. Definitely. <laughs> uh, project idea, homemade pinball machine. What's a kilometer? <laughs> <laughs> there are 1.6 kilometers in the mile. Or use Google. Work it out. Uh, homemade pinball machine. That would be kind of cool, but yeah, it takes up a lot of space. Not something I would build. I made pinball machines when I was a kid. That was my dream project when I was a kid. Never got them to work, though. <laughs> <laughs> there is the old passive pinball machines, but, uh, you know, that's just where it just bounces off of springs, the original ones. Whatever. What, the thing that got me was the thing that collapses and pushes the ball up. I was trying to make that with solenoids. So. Oh, okay. So it was electromechanical. Yeah. Poor Han. Who the heck is Han? Uh, John, maybe? Whose box joint jig is better? Uh, we have different opinions on that. Whose push thing is better? <laughs> <laughs> this is a proper push stick. I was trying to get John to, uh, I tried to get a photo of John using these push sticks on the table saw, but refused. I, we had time actually to make a proper push stick while I was here, but um, he didn't want that. I already have four proper push sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sell every Jenga pistol? Yeah, I, I did basically. I wish I hadn't because they make great gifts. 
and I just don't have the time to make more. You Canadians are quite clever. What do you think of sanding wood with an angle grinder? <clears throat> I suppose if you're doing something like a sculpted rocker or something like that, then it makes sense. Um, I just use a belt sander. Feel free to pick out some questions soon, John. I'm just trying to look here. How's my hair, by the way? Oh, miter saw with a stable saw, man. Oh, you know, we might not be friends anymore by the time this is done. <laughs> I like the table saw. The table saw is my favorite uh, tool. I actually... I, go ahead. I do have a miter saw in the shop. I just never use it. But it may not be a very good one either. What's in the drinks? Vodka. Oh, probably a tiny bit of chlorine. And lots of H2O. What the heck am I seeing here? Okay, That's I'm going to have to block this guy, Kern something 62. Oh, you're going to block him. <laughs> he says, I prefer John's push stick. <laughs> Obviously, man, a good taste. Uh, what do your wives think of you spending a lot of time on woodworking? I don't have a wife. I'm, I'm trying to marry this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least then we wouldn't have issues with that. But we'd have to have two shops. Um, yeah, Rachel is, I, I do it as a full-time job, so as long as I do it while she's at work, it's not a problem. Focus uh, master. <laughs> yeah, I don't have one of those. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I left focus at home. Stream lagging big time now for me, anyhow. Actually, I'm curious how much the stream is lagging, so uh, I'm going to clap my hands, and if you guys could just sort of... At least one of you comment when you see the clap. It's not snowing in Ottawa, yeah. No. Cold enough this morning, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious how far the stream will be behind. Uh, but 20 seconds is pretty normal. A minute would still be acceptable. Okay. What's uh, Art saying there? Is part of it's covered by the window? Is John's house project scared you off. Oh, okay. This is actually not bad. So we're still under 30 seconds of latency. A lot of clapping going on. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The latency is mm -hmm. on the order of 30 seconds, which is actually pretty normal for a live stream. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. Is my Craig jig for sale? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, it's very useful for abusing from time to time. And I have used pocket holes sometimes. Uh, it's very difficult though because I never hear the end of it when I do use a pocket hole. I don't have a Craig Geek at all. Last time I used it, I ran it over with the forklift. Oh, yeah? Oh, the, the yeah. toy one, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I did announce in the previous live stream that there would be a Craig Jig in the next video. Oh, okay. And I used it to run it over, have something to run over with a forklift. We're seeing frame freeze. Uh, okay, I'll ignore that. Uh, must be on your end. Uh, are we going to make a collab video? Does John have the same saw stop heartburn as you? I don't like saw stops, so no, I wouldn't have one. I saw Not on that they're offering. I saw insta on Instagram Matt Cremona just got given one. I'm pretty sure it was given to him. They have not contacted me. Surprise, surprise. Me neither. Although it would be a cool thing to like do something, use my tractor on it. Actually, no, if I had a soft stop, I would probably paint it a different color just to disguise it. I, there's nothing wrong with it as a table saw, I'm sure. It's just... It looks like a good saw. I just don't like the idea of a safer table saw. You think the operator should be safer, not the, not the tool. <clears throat> I, if I had a soft stop, I would probably be much more careful about the table saw, just knowing how much it would cost when the cartridge fires. Um, because sometimes I do get my fingers, especially using a sled, very close to the blade and conceivably, you know, it would nick my finger if I did touch it and that would be it versus destroying half the saw. Hey John, have you something for Mat Matthias too? No, I just came alone. He didn't bring no. any of his push sticks. No. He's still got a bunch left. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers have saw stops, and a lot of YouTubers have been given saw stops. They're very clever about marketing and placement that way. I don't smoke, by the way. I used to. Drop a saw saw off the scaffolding. It'd be very hard to get it up there. 
Not the contractor size one. Oh, yeah, I guess that would be easier. I guess I could heist it up with a tractor. Pizza, what's this? With or without pineapple? Don't know. Matthias, make your own sauce stop. I came close to that on my homemade table saw. I've had it where if I don't tighten the blade enough, it drops on its own. But not so much when you contact it, just when you don't want it to. <clears throat> Where is the best place to find used motors? Um, look around. I don't. If I had to go and buy a motor when I need one, I wouldn't know where to get one. Um, so whenever I come across a good motor cheap, I just take it. So I have a collection to. Appliance repair places uh, have motors sometimes. Oh, I, I just recently tore. I saw a dishwasher on the curb and I tore a motor out of that. Yeah, but the, how many leads does the motor have? Does it have like two? a bunch? Yeah, no. Two. Yeah, it's got the run capacitor right on it. Like oh, so, okay. it's it's an induction motor. It would be barely powerful enough for like a, a strip sander or a small dust collector, but not for a bandsaw. We had a really lively talk before this all morning that you guys missed out on. I'll just like to tell you that. <laughs> 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 not that there's anything wrong with this talk here, though, but that one. You know, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff there. Yes, uh, it's easier when uh, when you don't have to worry about what people might think. What do you think of Izzy Smile? We like Izzy. Izzy's a good guy. <clears throat> That's not what you said earlier. <laughs> uh, what size motor did you use on your bandsaw mill? Mine was two horsepower. When I was using my bandsaw for milling, uh, I initially started with a one horsepower motor, but I ran out of power. With a two horsepower motor, I had, I never ran out of power, but I, it's not a, it wasn't a very big mill. Uh, shop extension is still in the works, maybe. I might build a new shop, though. Depends. What's your hardest project? Oh, it's kind of hard. That's hard. Like, we don't necessarily rank our projects in order. My hardest one to make a video of was my folding metal knife because I kept worrying that I was going to mess up and then I'd lose all that video up to that point and have to do it all again. Uh, but that was, a, that was a pretty good, pretty big project to do for video. Have you influ been influenced by each other in your work? Yeah, to some extent. Definitely. Um, John built a strip sander. I built a strip sander. John mentioned he wasn't that thrilled about that. But uh, I built a box or a jig, then John built <clears> one. <throat> I wouldn't be on, I actually wouldn't be on YouTube uh, today if it wasn't for him. Yeah, actually, like I, I met John Heist uh, before he had a YouTube channel. Um, and on my website, like some of the, I have articles about some of John's projects, uh, that go back before his YouTube channel. Yeah. All in his old shop. I haven't visited John since he's moved. No. I was actually, when I first, uh, went to visit John, I hadn't seen him in person and then he opened the door and I'm like, I was expecting somebody much older. Yeah, because... I remember that. He, he was surprised that I was same age as him, actually. I'm just a little bit older, I think. It's and just, just a little bit uh, wiser. Yeah, it's the curmudgeonly attitude that just sort of makes him seem older. Someone says, do you do woodworking for a living? I do the YouTube thing for a living, yes. Yeah, for both of us. Which is, the amount of woodworking that that entails is more like hobby woodworking because... For me, sort of rule of thumb is one day in the shop is two days on the computer, just in terms of editing videos. For sure. I get one day per week, maybe, in the shop. So imagine if somebody was, you know, woodworking on the weekend and didn't make any content, they'd be doing the same amount of woodworking. Pronounce my last name. It rhymes with nice. It's heis. It rhymes with vice or dice or... Not lice. Don't say lice. You have a video on that, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. I oh, the, 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 the channel intro that you didn't use? or the, yep, Yeah. Yeah. Search for a uh, failed channel trailer. That's it. I'm 50. He's... 47. 47. There you go. Okay. 
What do you think of AVE? He's a good guy. It's not Wooburger, though. Sometimes I, I'm not, though. I, I kind of like that he doesn't sell out, but he's, he actually, not that I don't mind the occasional swearing, but it seems like he's swearing constantly. Um, but I do like that, uh, you know, he points out, he's very frank about issues with this or that, which you don't really see so much in other people's review videos because so many people are just shells. <clears throat> Have you ever bought any furniture? Yes, I bought a microwave stand once. I can't afford furniture, not yet. You both look younger. Thanks. <laughs> it's my makeup. It recognized in public, it's happened to both of us. Uh, nobody's ever asked for autographs. Um, the funny thing is somebody recognized Rachel from the videos once and asked for a selfie with her. Really? I posted that on Facebook. This is earlier this year. <clears throat> Do you find it frustrating to be filming while trying to get the project done? Yeah, it can be. It depends on the project. Um, Sometimes you just sometimes I skip filming certain aspects of it because I figure they aren't that interesting. Um, like I try to focus on the stuff that is more where there's actually some novelty to it. There's too many videos of guys cutting boards on a table saw. I saw that art. What is it? He said my my house is barren. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm waiting for the right woman to come along to. You know, set me straight. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think John was saying to me at some point, I remember him saying all women are crazy. Yeah. I disagree with him on that. Give, you, give him time. <laughs> He'll come around. <laughs> Usually takes around 10 years. <laughs> well, I'm only three years in, so... Wood chuck chuck. If it's hard chuck chuck. My mom makes the hard cider in the carboys. There was one step I omitted in that video, which is she leaves the containers open for a few days until it starts to foam up a bit. Basically, it gives it an opportunity to catch some wild yeast. Morning, um, Jack. We already answered the how old are you? Old enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Czech Republic? I've actually been there once, back I, uh, in my old job. Yeah, it's like a repetitive questions here. Um, guys, you might want to re-watch uh, the stream later on for some of those questions because we are seeing quite a bit of repeats. Yeah, and they're flying by pretty quick too, so it's yeah. kind of hard to catch one before it gets up to the top. I'm a slow reader too. Oh, I like Peter Brown's videos. I like his style. <clears throat> um, although it seems a bit much epoxy lately, but I guess that's where his focus. John, have you recovered from your recent viral video? Yes. <laughs> you complain about having lost so many subscribers recently, but a lot of those subscribers are probably people that subscribe just because of that and then change their mind. Well, I, I over a hundred thousand people subscribed after that video came out, and then. I lost around 12,000, so pretty good, gained a lot. Well, and I think some of the videos we made after that probably would have driven the guys. Yeah, I, I kind of made some videos after that would, that uh, weren't too popular either. I've, so. I had once the idea, because there is some people that are just over easily offended. And I had at some point the idea just to make a video that is so offensive to basically get rid of all of these people. I don't think it'll work. Yeah, I, I eventually concluded that that probably wouldn't work. Um, so I, I never made that video. You, you can only watch one TV show from now on. Which one do you watch? I don't know. I don't have a TV. I don't have any current TV. I, I watch TV shows after the fact on DVD usually. I have favorites, but uh... Matthias, when will you start welding? I've actually, I'm actually, uh, it's about two thirds done. Uh, a trailer for my lawn tractor. 
Um, so I've been filming that and making some truly horrendous weld, which actually show because uh, you notice that when people do their first welding video, they usually don't show any close-ups of the welds because they look really awful. Uh, <laughs> I decided to actually show some of my awful welds. <clears throat> it was difficult to film uh, for me because the woodworking stuff I just know is so down cold that I don't really have to think about it so much, but the welding I had to think about, and at the same time I had to think about how to film it. Um, so that was tricky. Uh, it makes me appreciate like some of the inexperienced YouTube woodworkers that they see much more of a challenge. Whereas John and I have been kind of building stuff all our lives, so it's not really a challenge. That part is not a challenge. Yes, I still speak German. I see that question many, many times. What? And there's another one. Do you know Czech Republic? I think some of you guys are just resubmitting your questions over and over again, aren't you? Must be. What machine could you build? Could I build with a washing machine motor? Uh, basically anything that takes half an horsepower or less. A bandsaw is ideal. A table saw would be a bit too slow for and too underpowered. Bandsaw or belt sander kind of thing. Those those would be the most practical machines. I had a question go by. What was your favorite project from each other? So my favorite project that he did, I can't really say I like his videos where he's out at his camp where he used to live showing the old cottages and stuff but uh, for machine projects I think the band saws when he first did those were the ones that really got me hooked and actually made me want to build one of my own and you built one and I did but more metal than wood more metal What got you into woodworking? Just wanting to build stuff. My dad had a wood shop, so. Uh, actually, like welding stuff together out of steel, I'm kind of like, wood is nope. wood is so much cheaper, so much easier to cut, um, more precise <clears throat> than welding. I mean, you can do things much more, much very accurately when you're milling things, but welding, you get a lot of distortion in the material. You get the distortion, but it's an instant gratification thing because you can weld it and it's together. Oh yeah, you don't have to wait. Done. For you don't have to wait for glue to dry or. You just pick it up it. and then go. Oh shit, that's hot. <laughs> well, then you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an inexperienced welder. <laughs> he was welding without gloves, by the way. So I'll give him a hack. He and got, short sleeves. He got sunburn. Do you sometimes just enter the shop with an ID and leave the camera behind and build for pure fun? Yep, I do that less now though, but uh, sometimes I still do it. Will you ever build a CNC? No. Do you still <clears throat> have you still have your shape over there? Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking around. I'm not seeing AV in the room, so maybe some, <laughs> some less comments about him. Yeah, we won't read those comments. <laughs> Partially glued in microwave. Uh, that would be a bad idea. Matthias is about four hours drive from me. Have you ever thought about making a drill press? Uh, see my FAQ document? Actually, let me just put a link to that here. You can do that. You can do anything. <clears throat> that actually answers a lot of questions. Video editing takes a long time to, to describe. Yeah, I have I have a bit of a mention on that. Um, as far as I know, all video editing programs suck in one way or another. And John and I were just discussing how our respective video pro editing programs suck. Um, what uh, we have both, we've both learned to deal with the problems with our various, with the programs that we do use. Um, I use Sony Vegas. Uh, can't really recommend it. That uh, that's been sold off now, so that can't be a good thing. Um, I bought it in 2012, and I've been using it ever since. So it's been a good deal for me because I paid like I don't know, 120 dollars for it. <laughs> Look at this one. 
you can do anything besides I think I'm <laughs> flirting with you. <laughs> I think that was a comment on me saying that you can do anything. Uh, so I'm flirting with you. <clears throat> yeah, let's just leave that one be. How long does a typical project take, including filming? Um, it totally varies. Uh, one of my successful videos about making how to make a dowel maker, for instance, that one took maybe an hour to film and it's been very successful. And then there are projects that take days to film and are un very unsuccessful. And it's, I'm not as good at predicting that as I wish I was. Um, some projects take over a week, like of total shop time, like if I'm building a bandsaw, um, others just take a few hours. Someone asked me if I'm getting a cat. No, only cats. Uh, next big project. I'm not finished my current big project, which is the miter saw uh, station. Any projects you never finished? Well, I don't know. I abandoned things early enough that before they become a project, if I realize they aren't going to work. <clears throat> yeah, that happens to me too. Too often, actually. Frank Howard's videos are great. That's twice somebody's asked that, I think. Yeah, he puts a lot of work into his videos. This is, yeah, this is white lightning here. Yep. <clears throat> uh, okay, these things are just going by too fast. Yeah, they're going pretty fast. Uh, what did I do when I worked at RIM? Various roles. I also designed one of the things I did is design the original OS for the uh, Blackberry. Um, but that's gotten this is before they were Java. Like, this is the first million or so that were sold that were pre GSM, that like the, the pre smartphone Blackberries. This is going way back to like 1998, 99. Can you bring back the marble runs again? I was actually mentioning that I'm thinking about making a marble machine myself. Yeah, he's got a really cool idea for a lifter. Any How good is the smoke in Canada? What smoke is that? Any chance of you to collaborate on a project slash machine build? At the distance makes that relatively impractical. Um, and we just disagree too much, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to have it his way. I'd have to have a mile. John way. Heist was actually, this is before he did much on YouTube, he actually made some of the box joint jigs of my design for sale, except he had to change the design because that's just how it is. So he, he made the giant, he made us, how many how many of those did you sell? I don't know, probably around 20. Oh, so that's a fair number of them. Yeah. What is the best bit of advice for new YouTubers. Um, Give up. Keep it simple, I would say. Try to avoid getting your hands into too many things at one time. I see a lot of guys just jumping into this like head first in terms of I'm going to do this full time and eventually it will make sense in terms of audience and revenue. I'd say do it as a hobby, you know, just dabble with it and see if you get traction because there are so many channels out there. Unless you've got some angle that's really unique on it, it's very difficult. I was actually, I always I already thought it was kind of too late when John got into it, but uh, John has got a really good angle on it. So uh, he's done well. I'm taller than him. I have three channels. Never run out of ideas. Plus Not, all the ideas people give you for free, eh? <laughs> yeah. Three million, what's that? I don't know. What's that, Dustin? Clarify. Clarify your statement. Oh, millimeters versus inches. That's another uh, point of friction. It's not a point of friction. People think that I don't, you know, understand metric and that, you know, I'm living in the, you know, the time before history began by using inches. And that's not the case. 
I'm more comfortable using inches because it's a it's a more organic, it's a more natural it method. Is, uh, I mean, the fractional thing is awful, but the inches, the size of divisions is actually a very, like if you're doing building construction, it's a, For every it's kind a of good thing. size unit. If you're trying to draw precise things on paper, I find a centimeter is a better size unit. But uh, certainly feet and inches are good size units. I think metric would have done better if the units, you know, if it was like a centimeter was two centimeters and then you had a I agree um, because but it also it totally depends on what you're working with uh, for instance if you're, if you're machining then thou makes a lot of sense that's thousands of an inch but if you're building a building then you know if you're off a thousand units it wouldn't really matter that's a good one mark everything on this truck is metric except the driver that's a that's an original quote right there Although I, I recently scavenged a washer, a motor out of a dishwasher, and then I measured a shaft, and I was surprised it was actually an inch-sized shaft. It was like three sixteenth. Uh, I thought for sure it would be uh, a metric size because just about everything that's manufactured is metric these days. But maybe it was an old, a very old one. Will you build another table saw? So I am. Yep. <laughs> I made videos like no one is watching because no one is now. Yeah, no. That's yeah, getting that initial views is tough and I don't know it used to be easier. I mean it's getting harder all the time because there's just so many people making videos nowadays. It used to be I mean web used to be like that too. If you just had a website you would get traffic because there was only so much stuff on there. Nowadays you make a website and nobody will come to it and I think video is moving in the same direction just because there are <clears throat> billions of videos but conversely also there's more viewers so that's true they both go up but you got to be making you got to be making quality projects you got to be doing stuff that people are interested in watching because you'll see that occasionally he'll make something that's not very interesting and it won't get viewed as much the same thing with everybody that does this. If you're not making an interesting project, it just doesn't get watched. Yeah, I, I mean, John and I, even if we make a terrible video, it will get a certain a certain fraction of subscribers will watch it regardless. But uh, beyond that, uh, like some videos continue to do well, like my mousetrap video or the one about the forklift and other videos like the one about my pantry closet shelves, they just kind of fall flat after that initial surge. Yeah, my, my veneer, iron-on veneer video is doing terribly good video, too. Instructive. I have a chainsaw. You'll see it soon. I'm going to be making one more of my very popular uh, Furious Point of View builds, and I'll be using that chainsaw on that. Oh, I should mount the GoPro on the cutting bar or something. <laughs> Huh? Mount a GoPro camera on the chain bar on the oh, bar. Oh yeah. yeah, definite possibilities <laughs> there. Just, 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 just to assert my manliness, I have two chainsaws. Gas powered ones. But mine's bigger than his. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> are yeah, you, are mine are on, only 18 inch. Are you on Instagram? Nope. I don't have a a smartphone. Yeah, I don't have one either. I do look at other people's Instagram type of things, but I just I just don't see enough value in it. And plus, I don't have a smartphone. Make a wooden chainsaw, okay, Rick? Um, how could you make that run though? That would be a camera trick. I'm sure Izzy Swan could do it. Drill power. <laughs> <laughs> You could use your wooden chainsaw to cut paper. Yeah. Wow, yeah. these these are moving. Yeah, there's so many coming by. So we're just kind of like trying to pick out various questions to answer. There's just too many, and I think a lot of you guys. Yeah, I see so many repeated questions on here. It's all wood bike. Nope. That's been done lots of times. Guys have done that. Yeah, it's not really a useful project either. 
I mean, you can build a dresser even though other people have built a dresser because it's useful, but to build a wooden bike, it's like, it's been done a few times before, so the novelty isn't really there. John needs a refill. <laughs> Would you ever do Twitch builds? No, I actually wrote about that on my website, why I've concluded that live builds are just a terrible idea. It's just like you gotta edit the stuff, otherwise it's really boring to watch. And I watch some of Bob Claggett's live builds. Sometimes I, when I know they're on, I just sort of take a peek. But uh, I find these things have to be. You can't really watch them live because they're just. You need to fast forward because the action is just too slow. Reasons for not owning a smartphone. Don't need one. Yeah, I, I actually at this point uh, I let my cell phone lapse, so I don't even have a cell phone right now. A cell phone is all I have. I don't have a home phone, so I use that for everything, and I don't even use that very often. So we, most communications these days is with email or reading comments. <laughs> we have a phone line with a physical phone attached to it, and it's you know unlike my keys, I can always find the phone because it's always attached to the wall. Like it's always at the end of that cord. And it never runs out of batteries and it never crashes. Wooden smartphone. Favorite candy. Strangest place. You, strangest place you've seen gears that were obviously generated with a gear generator. I saw uh, some just as a background on a TED talk once. Posted about that on Facebook a few years back. Who the heck is Harambi anyway? This is, I'm seeing this all over the place. I'm not with it, guys. Tell me who Harambi is. <clears throat> they may look young, but they're still dinosaurs not using smartphones. Internet also doesn't sound... Fan of yours? <laughs> 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 Wooden PC case. We both did that, actually. Yeah. Although mine looks better. It does. Hey. You're going, what? <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> He's I'm got sure. all kinds of nice veneer on his. It's big and clunky, though. It has to be. <laughs> yeah. The internal filter is actually a good idea, the way it, so it doesn't get full of dust. What did you do at RIM? I answered that before. Rewind, guys. Just rewind. <laughs> You don't have a free BlackBerry? I did have a free BlackBerry, but uh, the thing is, I left in 2007, so it's very, very, very obsolete. Standalone shop like Alan did? Yeah, I've been considering it, either that or an addition on my current shop. Yeah, Bitcoin. Nope. Do I have a problem with dust? I would have a problem with dust if I spent more time in the shop per week, but right now I'm only spending maybe a day in total. So it's you know it's you know it's not a big deal. I think that dust is much more of a problem if you're a professional in a way like in some ways like John and I are professional YouTubers and hobby woodworkers in terms of how much woodworking we do. If you are somebody who makes furniture or something like that, you'll be spending a lot of more of your time cutting and doing that every day. So right there, you got like 10 times the dust exposure than you would for the kind of woodworking that we do, where a lot of it is, you know, filming it, where you're building one, you spend a lot of time setting up the camera, setting up this and that, and figuring out how it goes together. So you don't actually end up cutting up that much wood. Build a lathe for metal. I've been using my wood lathe for a bit of metal work, just using an angle grinder. I may do that again in the future. I've done some of that too. The Canadian Tire Drop you as sponsors, that was never a long-term thing. That was just a one one video deal for both of us. Yeah. Now you, too, you did too. Yeah. <clears throat> How many panther rotors exist in the world? It's, I mean, I don't hear from most people that build one. It's definitely at least in the hundreds. Yeah. 
Any tips for what things to pull from the garbage, safe from the curb? Most of the stuff in the garbage is just garbage. Um, it's, you know, people think it's like, where do you find that sort of stuff? Well, every time I find something that's useful, it's a lucky find. Can John go to the Magla camp? I wouldn't mind, actually. Oh, you'd be welcome to. Be interesting. Please answer Maris's question. I wonder what Maris's question was. <laughs> he asked a question, I answered it, but maybe he answered no. But that was long ago. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, do I need to clean my DC filter bag sometimes? Uh, my dust collector actually uses, doesn't have a filter bag. Oh, maybe the one behind us, yeah, that one. one. Um, <clears throat> I shake it out from time to time, but actually part of the filtration is the dust itself. Um, some filters actually, like they before, even though they have more air resistance, they become more effective at filtering out dust once they have a lot of dust in them. So that filter bag has a lot of air resistance, but the blower has got also a fair bit of pressure. And that filter is the air, once it's, it releases a bit of dust when the bag inflates, but once it's running, if I put the uh, particle counter right next to it, uh, the particle counts are amazingly low off of that bag. It's like, it's kind of unbelievable. Um, so I'm not terribly clean. I think part of the cleaning on that one is just that when it collapses in on itself, I deliberately hung it up by the ceiling so it wouldn't do that so much so that it wouldn't uh, have as much dust falling off of it. What's a Hilch Vortec tube? Somebody's saying a book with a Hilch Vortec tube out of wood. I have no idea what that is. Someone asked me what I'm going to do with the Panther router. I haven't uh, decided yet. I would imagine make some more disintendants for something. I could, yeah. Oh, okay, or something more might original. Do something a bit different. I know Frank, Frank Howard yeah, he used had... it to cut an inlay in a bowl or something. Yeah. Video idea, shredder made from old table saw blades. That would take a lot of blades. Yeah. And a lot of torque. Yeah. Have to be, definitely have to be gas powered. <laughs> it would be interesting to make a shredder out of one of those uh, hand push lawnmowers because I actually, those actually cut paper fairly well. I've experimented with that, but I have no desire to build a shredder. Yeah, I don't have enough paper to shred. I think he was asking about bottles, so. Someone asked favorite beer. Oh, I don't drink. Yeah, I don't drink enough beer. Do you guys Just see other YouTubers copying your project without giving you credit? It happens from time to time. For the most part, people are pretty good about it. But you know, then again, like what ideas? Um, I mean, to some extent, uh, everything is, I mean, ideas are often based on other ideas. So when is it a copy? Sometimes it's clear that it's an outright copy. Other times it's more inspirational. But uh, yeah, certainly there's been a lot of people, for instance, using uh, a rotating screw thread to make a box joint jig, and that's been copied a few times. And then John has had the idea of making it non-rotating, and then people have copied that. They would probably say it's inspired, though. But then, for instance, the LS micropositioner thingy, that also uses a non-rotating screw thread, so... Yeah. <sighs> what is my luckiest find from the streets? I found a scroll saw. Um, and a bunch of motors at the same time, and there was a little crappy four-inch jointer, but that four-inch <coughs> jointer, I actually smashed it with a hammer before I put it back on the curb because the design of it was so dangerous, I decided that it would be... Uh, <laughs> Public service. <laughs> yes, and plus I kept the cutter head anyways. <laughs> I still have that cutter head. Yeah. But the, the knives actually protruded about half an inch off of the... Yeah. Wow. And then there's a huge amount of gap around the head, so it, it was just ridiculously dangerous. Roy's asking, how do you decide if a project is worth making plans for? That's a that's a interesting one because you gotta look at you gotta look at how complex it's gonna be, 
That's a big thing right there. And how common it is also, how much people want it. It's a huge investment to make a set of plans for something. Oh, yeah. Somebody's like, do you like Colin Furs? Yes. I'm a huge fan of the guy. Builds crazy stuff out of metal. Yeah, I watch his videos. Uh, John doesn't actually watch a lot of videos, so that's a real compliment. I don't watch videos because I have uh, expensive in internet, so I have to be picky. Yeah, when when I'm away from home at the Amogla camp, for instance, I have to use wireless internet, and I become much more selective about what I watch at that point too. Bucket list project that you have or just haven't gotten to yet. For me, it's that table saw that I keep promising, but have not gotten around the building. But there are lots of other things that I've got planned too. I've actually, there's one that's been on my list of things to do since 2007, uh, a double pendulum thingy that moves chaotically, which that's easy enough to do, but then to have something that keeps it powered. Um, and I've actually, it's behind the computer right now. I've got a, a prototype that I was showing John, which doesn't, which some aspects of that actually work, and but it doesn't go chaotic yet. But... I will hopefully get around to building one that works. Um, I will include the non-working one in the video if I do finish that one. Someone says speaker building. I've done that. I don't have any videos on it. Oh, that would be that. That, that crowd would be just as bad as the free energy crowd. I'm oh sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are gonna sound terrible. Post-apocalyptic inventor, watch him, yeah. I think we both do. He's a bit of a complainer, but I like his projects. He gets very in-depth into things. I wish he was a little bit more concise, though. Yes, he is complaining, isn't he? He's whining. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm making friends out there, aren't I? Yeah, nobody will watch our videos anymore after this. <laughs> <laughs> John, how's the Westeros table coming? I haven't finished it yet. I was going to try to get it finished before the series eventually does end. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Yeah, somebody asked, would you rather be making projects or making YouTube videos? I the, like both parts, actually. I, the projects are much more fun, but uh, if you don't make a, like, it's the video where you sort of get the satisfaction out of it. Well, I mean, for me, I mean, the project would be more enjoyable if I didn't have to film it and photograph it. But I really make, like making the video too, so. Oh, yeah. Would you still be willing to do all Jorik Sprig? There's a joke about that in my previous live stream after his most recent videos. Yeah, that's, that's pretty frighteningly powerful, his latest uh, arrow shooter thingy. What of course, um, like compre with compressed air. So in Germany, the legal situation is you're not allowed to fire some things out of a barrel. Okay. Because at that point, it's a firearm and it's restricted. <clears throat> but if you're firing, if you've got a tube of air and you slide the arrow over top of it, that is classified as a toy, even though that can be actually... Probably the lawmakers didn't anticipate that method of shooting something. So he shoots these arrows at ridiculous speeds. Uh, I would, of course, shoot things out of a barrel, which is much more efficient. So... I think I would have the advantage on him on that, but I don't have an air compressor that will do 30 bars like he does. I was I was able to get a good wallop out of my air guns, but uh, the highest I ever pumped mine up to was 200 psi. I want to make a crossbow soon-ish. Something different. Oh, I just just the other day I picked up out of the garbage some of those fiberglass rods for tents, and I'm thinking, hey, those could make a cool uh, bow for a crossbow. Yeah, yeah, they they got a lot of flex there. Yeah, I was going to use the trampoline springs. Oh yeah, that good too. What editing software do you use? I answered that on my website. I use Sony Vegas. You use Power Director. They both suck. But they suck in a way that, like you said, if you get used to them, you know what sucks. It's like that car that pulls to the left. You know it pulls to the left, so you're going to compensate for it. 
a podcast together? No, unlikely. This is actually a one-shot deal. Like we're not planning on repeating this. Yeah, this is not my cup of tea. So watch it now. <laughs> yeah, there probably won't be anymore. It'll still be online later on, but uh, yeah. Um, neither like I, I do listen to uh, making it podcast, and then sometimes I imagine what if I was on that podcast, and it's like I would have nothing to say. Um, I'm just not into that sort of banter. Just no. Nah. Wooden clocks. That's been done too much. John, you have time for guitar playing? I can't play guitar. I made guitar amps years ago. But I still have, actually. I might pull it out in the video and, and, and show and tell type thing when I say it. Yeah, you've got a video with showing your guitar amp with a guitar. That's my brother playing the guitar. He's, oh. he, he's, uh, he plays, I don't. But there's lots of people commenting that you don't know how to play the guitar. Yeah, well, let's so. see there. You know, it's not about your playing skills. It's about how the guitar, I mean, the, the amplifier itself sounds. Mm -hmm. So they kind of miss the point, like a lot of commenters do. Not you guys, of course, though. Do you use the wooden siren often? I uh, I set it up in the Hall on the Halloween, I think, after the Halloween that was after I built it. But I haven't actually, the, it's, it's, I haven't taken it apart yet. The motor's still on it. But as soon as I need that motor, that siren is history. Right now, it's just in the shed. These are our regular jobs. Do you like to barbecue slash grill? Yeah, I just barbecued something when John got here. Oh, it was good. Good steak. John, what inspired your furious point of view vids? Uh, a lot of people think it was uh, how to basic, but it's more a kind of a play on video games. That's what I had in mind. I actually had part of it that I partly edited but I didn't put it in where my hand would flick up across the screen like this and change to the tool I'm going to use, almost like you're playing the game, and then I'd select, you know, uh, sledgehammer or chainsaw, and I might put that in the next one. That everybody will hate it. Oh, that would make the analogy more obvious, I guess. I think so, but I still get the same comment over and over again about how to basic. He's like the only guy that's done any first person stuff. No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I don't like, you know, all these guys that mount their GoPro to a board that they're cutting. I'm just like, eh. it doesn't enhance the storytelling in any way, I think. It's novel, but. Mm. Favorite video of yours that you've posted so far? Well, it's just because it's done so well, the uh, the mouse trap video. Really? That took months to shoot. A couple of like over. A, I shot that over a course of a couple of months just to get okay. all the footage. Video I'm most happy with. I can't say I'm. I'm not overly happy with most of my videos when I'm done with them. <clears throat> Do you play a lot of video games? Uh, I really got into playing Lemmings. That gives you an idea how long ago. <laughs> if you don't remember, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I think that was popular around 1990. Why does he hate AVE? Nobody hates AVE here. Look at that. See how many comments in a row? And the same guy. I wish I could just push a button to filter that out. Yes, it's the band button. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins at arm wrestling? Oh, I'm pretty sure John. I don't think so. I'm a little bit bigger, wider, but I think he's got the strength. Uh, I don't know. Have you tried papers and skill soft today? No. Following John's video, I was like, what if I could cut a nail with a paper blade? And I tried it, but it didn't work. And it turns out John had tried it with aluminum, which is much softer, and that didn't work either. See, he was trying to copy my idea there. That's right, but I needed a new angle on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, 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 and I slowly cranked up the blade, like gave it like a couple of minutes rubbing against that nail, and all of it was just polishing a little bit. So I think if I went through like a ream of 500 sheets of paper, I might make it through the nail eventually, but... I just don't have the patience. 
Either of you travel in the U.S. I don't have a passport anymore, so I don't go to the U.S. I think it's crazy that they made having a passport to go across the border. I haven't been to the U.S. US in, I think the last time was in the U.S. was in 2013. Last time I was in the States was 1990. <laughs> so not yesterday. Izzy versus Stumpy Nub. Well, Izzy would win. He's bigger. In a cage match, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his drill-powered things are more portable, so it would be they would be more. It, certainly, Izzy's devices are much more useful. I'm putting my money on Izzy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite homemade hand tool? Uh, for me, it's my little hand plane. John, would you ever do a plexiglass knife? You know what I thought about doing was making one from glass, not plexiglass. But I'd need a special belt for my grinder that can handle glass and try to, you know, wet it in some way so it wouldn't get airborne glass grinding to kill me off <laughs> real quick. I've, I've actually used just a regular belt sander to slightly to chamfer the sharp edges. I'm I've done that too, glass. but it's not good outside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you like it, just to get the, take the corners off so you don't cut yourself off of it. But it won't be aggressive enough to give it a good bevel. You know? no, Need yeah. a nice diamond belt. Yeah. Do we live near each other? Well, in terms of the scope of North America, yes. Um, we're both not in walking Ontario. distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there any conferences you've been invited to? I wouldn't go. Have I heard of Chucky 2009? Yes. Um, I used to watch him more, um, but uh, I've since discovered better channels covering that topic. Favorite book? I haven't had time to read books lately. Calculus. <laughs> <laughs> I still have I still have my uh, some of my uh, calculus and physics textbooks from university. Not that I ever opened them because nowadays it's like if I need to look something up, I'll just look it up online. Yeah, that's it exactly. Books are getting obsolete. I still really like to read though. One book that seems to be very popular around here is uh, Moo Ba La 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 by Sandra Point. <laughs> Anybody who's got small kids knows what that is. Any thought on Swedish-based Tormek sharpening system? I don't have one. It's been suggested a few times, and I thought about building one, because to gear down a motor to that speed wouldn't be that hard. So then I looked online for buying a stone, and I realized the stone was the bulk of the, most of the cost of the sharpener. So, if you're going to spend that much money, you might as well spend a little bit more and get the whole sharpener. I was thinking to try to make actually my own grindstone, take the sand and and mix just the right amount of epoxy with it, mm -hmm. so that it will form. You need some very fine sand for that. Right? Do you really need no. fine sand? Because you look at uh, a lot of these aluminum oxide stones, and they're Pretty big grits, oh. you know. Mm. So I know fracture, and that'll be a fresh cutting thing. But I think that the epoxy would make it a bit too yeah, gummy. Could gum it up a bit, yeah. I'm thinking actually, like I should experiment with like getting a really fine belt for steel and experiment with sharpening that way. But mostly, I just use my white wheel, the horizontal one. I've shown that in a few videos. Uh, most recently about sharpening planer blades. Uh, it works quite well. I have no idea where you'd get one of those. I got that one at a yard sale for like $10. How does it feel to be such big YouTubers? I don't know. Um, I, you know, we, do, we can't feel when other people watch our videos. <clears throat> it's just numbers on the screen to us. Have I ever been to Kentucky? Nope. Might have driven it through it once.
Oh, well, it's good. Some people are answering other people's questions already. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Which of your projects on YouTube have you take, since taken apart? I've taken apart several. I was actually commenting. The, I was saying something about that earlier. How, you know, if I'm not entirely happy with something, I will quickly <laughs> condemn it and use it bits of it to make the next best thing so he's got a video where he shows burning bits of his old homemade table saw yeah yep there is um my first homemade dust collector there and i'm thinking actually of making a video about that one because there are it still works as the day i built it but there's just so many subtle things wrong with it and it's tempting to fix it but by the time i fix everything i basically end up with i might as well start from scratch which is exactly what i did and the new one I'm quite happy with. Favorite activity besides woodworking? Woodworking is not even my favorite activity. <laughs> <laughs> Wooden snowblower. I have one of those. It's got, although it's got a plastic thing on the end, on both ends, but it's a wooden handle. And you move it back and forth to move the snow off the driveway. It's very efficient. And very quiet, too. Is that an electric power one? No, it's a shovel. Oh, it's a shovel. <laughs> I also have a cordless screwdriver. There you go. No batteries to charge. Are most of your fans from Canada or the U.S.? I think the bulk of the fans for both channels are from the U.S. Yeah, like language and such, it's similar enough, and there's just so many more people. The States, the U.S. has got like 10 times as many people in it as Canada, so... That's kind of the ratio. And there seems to be more people interested in, in woodworking in the States, too, to be honest. When you look at the proportions, or at least mine do look that way anyway. Maybe people in Canada just simply hate me. <laughs> A lot of viewers from the UK, too, yes. I think UK is probably number three for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's for me, and after that, it's Germany, Australia, those are some of the bigger countries. And then a lot of Western European countries. Um, but certainly English-speaking countries dominate just because it's easier for them. Do you often get approached by fans in public? See, that's the thing. I don't see people that approach me as fans. They probably see me as some kind of celebrity. I've said this to Matthias before. You know, I don't see myself as a celebrity. And a lot of it is they come up to you and they start talking to you like they know you. And I'm happy with that. I'm good with that. It's just a little disconcerting sometimes you know, because they are strangers. <laughs> it's, better if, if it's better if they happen to have their own YouTube channel that you already watch. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you get the feeling that you know the person that you're watching, and it's it's completely understandable, and I totally get it. It just throws me off sometimes. Yeah, personally, I, I don't mind just to see. I, 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 I'm not so much a fan of doing a meet and greet. I don't think I'll do that sort of thing again because you sort of get the more intense fans. But to just kind of get a random fan who happens to recognize you because then you get a better sense of what a typical, well, more fan than average because at least they recognize you and said hello. But you get more of a sense of what a typical person, like, do they do any woodworking? What else do they watch? What sort of things do they build? That sort of thing. Push saw or pull saw? How about the one that spins? <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up for that one. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of funny. One of my it's on my FAQ too is about the, uh, the you know about the Joint Master Pro. Oh yeah, that crazy yeah, thing. Like, you know you could really improve on that by having a blade that rotates because then you can cut much deeper and it's automatic and and then you could motorize that and that would be a total improvement on that. And you know what? You can buy one of those and it costs a lot less. <laughs> Imagine, you know, turning out a house with one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to cost cut a 2 by 4 with it because, like, you just, you wouldn't be able to support it because it's too heavy and you have to move it back and forth. John, how is the DIY shotgun mic holding up? I don't use the shotgun, the DIY one anymore. I use that uh, Sennheiser one. It's more convenient, actually, to use. It has slightly better sound quality, so...
Matthias, do you have two YouTube channels? Yes, you are on the second one at this very moment. Yeah, everyone stopped posting so much. I can't see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because people can't see his questions. Yeah, yeah. I wish there wasn't as many, especially high from this or that country. There's too many of those. How do you two meet? Um, John Heist sent me an email back when things was more about website than YouTube. This is going back. Oh gosh, 2010. <clears throat> yeah, and John actually lived not that far out of the way from driving from where I lived at the time to my parents. So it was only a minor detour to go and visit him. What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to all kinds of music except country music. I don't like country music. Biggest pet peeve of comments. Um, go look at my video about making the plexiglass shelf. You will see 500 comments, um, which you can divide into three categories, and that accounts for the vast majority of them. Um, so basically the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, that's kind of an ongoing thing where people seem to not get it that the, the idea that they had is not original and that someone else just said it five minutes ago. Not that we don't like getting comments, that's not it, but it's the same thing over and over and over again. And then people wonder why you're not, you know, reading or answering the comments. And it's because you get so many that are the same. Make a smartphone case. Well, that would be kind of pointless when you don't have a smartphone. I did make a, I did make a wooden iPhone mock-up at some point, though, uh, in my, uh, when I made the video about carving a phone, the rotary phone. I ended up showing it's like that's so much more interesting than making say a wooden iPhone and I made one. John, are you a whiskey scotch connoisseur for some reason? I feel that you are. Now I'm more of a beer type guy. I don't drink that much actually. <clears throat> I don't smoke cigars. I don't smoke reefer. Where does the rumor of you guys being some kind of reality TV rivals come from? I haven't heard that rumor. I think he's saying that sometimes when you make a video, like you made the, the chop saw video saying that the dust collection sucked, and then shortly thereafter I made a video showing how to adjust the chop saw for accuracy. Oh, which was you in said, some ways in reaction to that, yeah. Yeah, you said that the uh, chop saws are not accurate, and then I turned around and said they were. Uh, that's pure coincidence, most of that stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, I've had some eerie things where things were very close together. I've had it one time also where, I don't remember what the video was, but Steve Ramsey posted a video, but it was very close to what I had done. And I so, remember that one, yeah. And so I'm kind of like, in order not to look like I copied Steve Ramsey, I uploaded that one right away. So it was too close to his time-wise that I wouldn't have been able had the time to actually make one in reaction to his. My favorite wood is spruce. I'm a big fan of white ash going extinct, unfortunately, but uh, it's a very, it's a very hard wood. I got a piece starting to bend down there too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh I think I see it. Is this oak? No, that's oak. That's uh, part of. It. This is a piece of white ash. Like in terms of when I did the screwdriver drop hardness test, uh, it's of the domestic woods. It's a nice wood for sure. Yeah. I like spruce because, first of all, it doesn't gum up your blade when you're cutting it. It dries relatively fast. It's relatively stable when it's when it's dry, and it's cheap. <laughs> yeah, I do use a lot of spruce as well. I have to say, in terms of tests I've done and reading about it, uh, the softwoods are more stable than hardwoods. Uh, they have about two thirds as much shrinkage and expansion. And sometimes, at least here, if you go to a place like Home Depot, some of that wood is really old growth and will be quite hard and heavy. So um, some of the spruce I've bought at Home Depot is as hard as, as white oak. Um, so that makes it, and, and being very stable, that makes it a very good wood to use for jigs. Although white oak looks much better. 
Yeah, the key is to keep is to make sure that it's it's dry enough before you use it. Yeah. And look for stuff that's defect free. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of these. What do you do this the most or that the most? Like, don't ask those questions because we don't really put these things in a row and <clears throat> categorize them. The thing that I do the most <laughs> <laughs> is uh, editing video. It takes a huge amount of time to edit each video takes way longer to edit the video than to make the project and film it but yeah this is something that anybody who talks about that online like this is true for pretty much everybody who makes videos well, unless you're just standing in front of the camera and oh, talking yeah, to a like vlog style that type of thing yeah. but if you've got a lot of clips to go through a lot of angles to show then it takes a lot of time yeah for me a typical video will have 50 to 100 clips after I delete the bad takes and then each clip, I typically cut that several times in the clip itself. So huge amounts of. So there will a typical video of mine will probably have two hundred or so cuts. Most of those cuts you can't see, but they're they're there. And that's the other thing is, uh, like we're doing that kind of thing all the time. It's a uh, like a lot of guys put out a lot more videos, like daily videos, but they're very simple videos. So they take less time. Has YouTube invited you to any of their events or courses? No, we don't exist for YouTube. I don't anyway. Yeah, I think it's kind of random. But at the same time, I've looked into what some people, because of course a lot of people have vlogged these things. And it's like the focus is not so much about the kind of videos we make. Um, so I'm not even sure one of these things would at all be useful. Um, yeah, like these learning seminars and stuff like that. I've got no interest in that. Uh, did you get a button, silver play button? On no, the, I think I, I was always I was already way past that when they introduced that program. So I think I would have had to request one. Are you? Do yeah. Yeah, well, I did never they never offered to send me one. Anyways, I never got one. Either. I think I could have. I think I could have asked for one because I was already over that. But I thought it was automatic type thing, but I never got anything on it. Not that I want one. I don't yeah, want it's one. like, what do you do with it afterwards? Yeah, hang it on the wall. It's going to look yeah, at me. Yeah, hang that sort of thing. Oh, big deal. <laughs> and if it was made out of silver, then I'd want one because the, you know, the silver's you, Yeah, worth. you could sell it. Something. I liked um, Cody's Lab. That guy, he made a silver play button out of real silver. That was cool. That was interesting, yeah. Can you not pay people to edit video? We talked about that earlier. You can't really do that. First of all, you have to have some you know, knowledge of what's going on in the video. So you have to be a really good word worker to begin with to know exactly how much a show of each part. And it's just, it just wouldn't work out well. Especially not for me because I don't have a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, and for me too, like it would just take so much time to send the files. And then I would, you know, somebody would edit the video and I would say, okay, let's change this, change this, change this, change this. And by the time you did that, you could have done it yourself. Yeah, at that, by that time, I could have just edited the video. Uh, because, yeah, it's a huge part of the creative process. And a lot of the really big YouTubers, is, as, I don't know of any big YouTubers that uh, get somebody else to do their editing. The only one I'm aware of, I think Bob Claggett to get somebody to do some editing for him. But in terms of, like, the guy's... You know, the guys with millions of subscribers, I don't know of anybody who has somebody else do their editing. Screwheads, Phillips, Fazajaz, Square. Square is not Square, it's, Tor it's Robertson. Yeah. Robertson is Robertson or Robert Robinson? It's Robert. Robertson. Art Mulder made a good video about that. And there he is again. Yeah, he just commented. They're <laughs> both too grumpy and type A to let someone else. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah, yes. I would never be happy. I'm never happy with what the stuff I do. So why would I be happy with anybody else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like if I go back. So if you haven't looked at something for a long time, then you can see it more critical. So if I look, if I, if if a clone of me did the editing for me, I probably wouldn't be happy with it because I would see all the flaws and it's like, why is this such a shady video? <laughs> um, but there's the other important thing is. Um, when you do your own editing, you shoot in a way, you're basically composing the video in your head already. Um, so to know how this will turn out in terms of editing, 
you shoot in a different way that makes it easy. For example, um, I did have somebody at some point experiment with somebody actually filming handheld, which in some ways is a good idea because you don't have to worry about going out of frame because they'll just follow you, but it makes the editing much more difficult because now I can't just cut a second here or there because the camera has moved. Paul Sauer's son does his editing. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Sauer's son does his editing. Um, I would suggest that Paul Sauer's get his son to do his editing <clears throat> because they don't seem very edited. There's just too long run. Yeah, like his too. videos are different anyways. It's mostly yeah. him standing there talking to the camera. Yeah. Like he could really use some editing. Any thoughts on hacker spaces, maker spaces? My experience is shared workshops are always a disaster because um, you need somebody who is in charge of the tools to keep them in good condition. And so if you just have random people using the tools, um, they just, just get buggered up. Yeah, we both know Art. He's Art Muller. He's uh, out west of me, actually. So he's even more further from Matthias. Uh, way out west, as in like 800 kilometers. Yeah, actually, like we met each other. We met Art the first time this summer. At the meet, meet at the meetup, yeah. And then he came to my house. Uh, during the summer, for a day. Which one of your box joint jigs do you prefer? I think our answers differ on that one. I think mine is uh, easier to build. Uh, I yeah, there is actually John's does have the advantage of being smaller and probably easier to build. Um, in terms of what it can do, like the having the very many options in terms of spacing. Um, but I tend to focus not so much on uh, now. I see you've done it. He's going to pull it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it reminds me somebody built a whole bunch of compasses. John and I have both done compasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so this <clears throat> is this is my beam compass, which the guy was saying, this is by far the hardest to build. But it's also, I think he concluded, it's like, this is the nicest one, but it's also the hardest to build. And Aesthetically pleasing, I think is the way he put it. Oh. That it looks it looks pretty. No, I just think it was the best. Oh yeah. Yeah, actually, you know I was... what? I gotta say that mine is, I, if I had to do it again, I would build something more like this, but not exactly. I'm not sure if you can see that. No, you can't. <laughs> oh yeah, here. There we go. I was actually very conscious about picking a very light colored wood for this and a darker colored wood for, for this part here. For the contrast. Yeah, I'm not sure what species of wood that is, uh, but I've just used some of that wood. Are they wood. both the same? Are they both like different? No, I was going to say that's maple, but it's not maple. I've actually used that wood again for the flywheel of this little engine which is in an upcoming video is it apple maybe i don't know like the thing is i've just collected so many random bits of wood uh you'd have to do a dna analysis to figure out what it was at did this it start point. off as firewood though probably <coughs> it could be it could be apple wood because it kind of looks like apple it's got that color oh. this is me pretending i know about wood <laughs> <laughs> I need more moonshine. Matthias, make a knife. I've made a knife. I use it too. It's just not a Jimmy DeResta style knife. It's just a small carving knife that I use. I like John's beam compass more. Thank you. Okay, where's that bind button? <laughs> I was going to make a new beam compass actually because the video is done well. And you gotta keep milking those things. Yeah, I'm disappointed. This video is done okay, but not in proportion to how I, how neat I thought it was. It looks just too pretty for most guys, I think. Yeah, I guess I should camouflage paint it or something.
Is your workshop equipment white ash? No. Uh, I have it as drawer fronts on the tool stand, but uh, no, there's nothing equipment wise that has any significant white ash on it. Was there something that you learned from each other's videos? That's the thing. When I watch his videos, I almost always, if I don't learn something, I, I kind of get thinking about something else. So that's usually what happens. That's I, the mark of a good video, by the way. It gets you thinking, I think. I've always, like for some of John's videos, because they're usually about something that is, you know, not so basic. Uh, like John is, in terms of engineering skill, John's videos are quite up there. And I really appreciate that. Like, there's there's only a few that really have a lot of uh, think about like in terms of me that, that where I really like the engineering. Like Marius Hornberger is another one. Um, some of Frank Howarth's, although he focused more on art type things. John um, can't think of any else that are really up there in terms of engineering. Um, Izzy Swan does do a lot of very mechanical things but he's more it's more about a quick hack kind of thing and trying to make something go viral uh, any woodworking injuries um, my worst injury I've ever gotten was from a chisel I cut my thumb from here there's still a little bit of a scar you can see it right there you can probably see it I cut it from here right up to the tip using it as a plane I was trying to cut a panel a little bit smaller. I had my hand up here, and it slipped off, and it went woof right in there and opened it almost right to the bone. And, man, did that ever hurt. But my, I've never cut myself on the table saw. My worst injuries came from a carving knife, knife like this one. This is the homemade one. I haven't injured myself with this one. And there's a cut. Can you see it here? Oops, right about here at the point of the knife. I cut it. This is why I was about 16 when that happened. And then at some point, I jammed a knife in here. That was a big hole. Um, so, yeah, those were my worst injuries. Those, like, in terms of actual, yeah. There's, there's a bit of blood that came out for both of those. Yes, I'm a train engineer. The uh, I think that the, the worst injuries you're going to get in the workshop are usually from the things that you don't have as much respect for, for hurting you. Like hand tools, hand tools will often bite you because you're not as careful around them. Whereas a table saw, you know what that can do to you, so you're more careful. Why Marcus Marius Wernberger, question mark engineering? Uh, go watch his videos. Yeah, Marius is very technical, uh, and that's a good thing. And he, he presents it in a way that's, that's easy to understand, too, and that, uh, that's key. For, for those kind of videos. I quite liked his, he did his video that explained how that, that break, the the chuck lock works in, the, in a video. I linked to it from my article about the Mastercraft drill because I thought that was very insightful. I, I quite learned something from that video. Yeah, and the, and the video moved along well. It was, it was really well done. <laughs> what made your European Windows video go viral? I don't know, same thing as your uh, paper and saw blade video. <laughs> It's no, I think I think that the the Windows thing went viral because of the European <laughs> superiority complex. <laughs> <laughs> of course, get, they're superior. They use metric. I'm going to get hated on now. <laughs> you can see the comments speeding up. <laughs> <laughs> We're from Europe. We are better. <laughs> <clears throat> We're all actually from Europe originally, so I don't know because at least the Indians they would have they might have never descended off of Europeans they might have come straight from Africa originally. Well, you got to think that they all came from somewhere at some point, you know. Mm -hmm. I think national stuff like that is kind of silly, actually. Oh, look at that. That was <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, there's like probably a 25 second delay. Um, Jeremy Smith is also a good, yeah, he's very good at, at it too. I enjoy his videos. I, I recently got a little, he uses the wrong kind of push sticks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, he was he was saying like this kind of push stick. It's it's like he's like he's like it's no good. It's like yes, gotta use two of them. Or you could just use the right one to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how do you think technology changed woodworking? It hasn't really, I don't think. Not re actual woodworking. All the stuff that you see uh, us do and all the woodworkers has already been done before. And, but, you know, people even 100 years ago. So there's really nothing new. Not in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, like CNC is new, but you don't see it making that much of a dent for hobby woodworkers. Despite Shape Oko sending free CNC machines to so many people, it's like you get three videos of a typical CNC putting it together, the obligatory one, and then a project with it. And then the next one is how to store it out of the way so it doesn't get in the way. <laughs> and then maybe a fourth one about getting rid of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, the giveaway. <laughs> I haven't done that one yet. Hey, Izzy. <clears throat> Um, in terms of, you know, it's, it's more fashion changes than technology. So, for instance, uh, festival dominoes seem to be in some ways fashionable. Um, at some point, domi uh, biscuits were fashionable. Radial arm sauce used to be something a lot of people used, and now they've kind of gone extinct. Uh, whereas now it's the sliding compound miter saw that's popular. Um, the panther router, I hope, is uh, gaining in popularity. <laughs> <laughs> I like biscuits actually. I really uh, appreciate having my biscuit joiner uh, for things when I need it. You know, it's not an everyday tool, but when you need it, it's really handy. And yeah. it can really save a lot of time too. And I, f I found one at a yard sale and I used it in the video too. Yes, you put it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear, I fished it back out of the garbage at the, after that video. But there is actually some things that a biscuit joiner could be useful for, so I may end up using it at some point. Well, if you're putting together a cabinet, a simple cabinet for a kitchen or whatever, you know, you want to join the back to the side, and you know, you're going to put screws in there. That's fine. But to line up the panels perfectly, yeah, you put the biscuits in there. It takes no time at all to mark them and 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 cut them. Put the biscuits in. Put a little glue in there and drive a screw, and it's never coming apart. Not on its own, anyway. And it speeds up the process because it lines up the panel. Yeah, they, I think they're really good for lining things up. In terms of like adding strength to panel glue ups, they don't add strength. Well, okay, if you if you cut a biscuit slot into a panel, like two solid pieces of wood of, of that are going edge grain, they don't need it because the glue is strong enough. But another thing that can happen is that when you put the biscuit in, if the panel is actually thin enough that shape of that biscuit can telegraph through after it dries because those are compressed slightly before they go in. The glue wets them and then they swell up. And then when they shrink back again after the glue dries, it can actually pull that surface down. I've seen that and you can see it in a, in a well burnished table that's been sanded properly or not properly. I think the New Yankee workshop or Norm Abram commented on that actually one time pocket holes pocket holes are no good they're evil evil and i'm not saying that because he doesn't like them i didn't like them probably i got my mouse time. on the kill button right here <laughs> <laughs> biscuits make it stronger it can thoughts on it windows, doesn't hurt. Thoughts on windows 10 uh I do like the complete reinstall from scratch. Embarrassingly, I actually ended up paying for it recently because after a year of Microsoft trying to ram it down my throat, I wasn't ready for it. And then when I was ready for it, they wanted money for it. And first, then I was going to reinstall Windows 7, but I didn't have the right key for it because there was a branded key with my HP. And I'm like, ah, the hell with it. But uh, Windows 7 is definitely much easier to use. I like the fast boot time of Windows 8, though. I don't like I installed Windows 10 on my new editing computer, and I don't like it. It's too much of a framework, it seems, for uh, third-party apps. Oh, yeah, they're always trying to sell you stuff. Yeah. yeah, and I think they deliberately gave you a shitty calculator to come with Windows 10 so that you'd go into the App Store and try to buy a decent one. 
Uh, I found a Windows 7 calculator online and installed it on my, on my computer so I could have a usable calculator again. I'm not going to use the App Store. Are you Bill Gates' cousin? Steel biscuits? No, but I use steel dowels sometimes. I even have an applicator for those. I have a video on that. Uh, came out April Fool's, April 1st, uh, two years ago. How about Windows versus Linux? Linux would be all right, I guess. I've never used it if it would run the programs that you need to yeah, run. Yeah, there's no... The <clears> last <throat> time I looked into it, which wasn't that recently, there wasn't any editing software that really... That was stable enough to edit with. Like, I'd import, you know, 10 clips and then start editing, and I'd get five minutes in, and then it would crash. XP is the best. I don't, I don't agree. I like Windows 7 better. I think it's the most complete one so far. I quite liked XP, but at this point, there's too much software that doesn't support it anymore. Biscuits are for eating. Yeah, the UK viewers would understand that. Personally, actually, I quite liked Windows 2000 way back, but there's way too much software that doesn't run on that anymore. Too many software questions, guys. I've tried SketchUp with uh, Wine on Linux, um, but it wasn't stable enough. Okay, yeah, there's too many. 360 yet. video, that's kind of interesting, but I don't think I would get into it. It would make sense for a shop tour, maybe, but... Mm. There's too much of a gimmick, those things. It's like 3D video. Everybody was hot for that a while ago, and then it kind of fizzled. <clears throat> Trump or Hillary, who the heck are they? I was really rooting for Bernie Sanders. What? Bernie Sanders, he was a candidate. I the problem know. with Trump is he's crazy, but uh, like, I do have an opinion on that. Like, he speaks very frankly. He says crazy things, but that makes him like I, I'm so tired of politicians that weigh every word. Yeah, but is that is that something he's playing on though? Is it's almost like a clickbaity title on YouTube, oh, where yeah. you kind of get you know people's attention by doing that kind of thing? So. I'm always looking at the devious side of people. I I'm devious myself. I think Trump makes a positive contribution to politics unless he wins. How's basement coming along? Basement's still at a standstill. A lot of the work inside my house is at a standstill, trying to balance everything. I had my time back. I wouldn't have bought that house, actually. I would have bought something more finished. I did. I rebuilt an addition to my old place, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, I'm not doing that again. Favorite beer? I like MGD because it doesn't give me a headache when I drink it. But that's that might change. My favorite beer, actually, is Moosehead. For taste. Let's see if we get any moose head comments now. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll take 20, 30 seconds. But yeah, you can see there, it's like, yeah, but the lag is probably about what it was. We're just looking at the comments in reaction to what we said. Um, and yeah, there is, um, I think we see your comments when you post them right away, but the video is buffered by about 30 seconds. Just, uh, works much better with streaming video when there is is a buffer. It's a technical thing. It's not any conspiracy thing. Heineken. No, you, no, Heineken. Okay, this is from the from uh, Blue Velvet. Heineken. <laughs> How do you put it? I can't remember. Pat's Blue Ribbon. That's it. Yeah. Drafting versus CAD. I think drafting is dead, but sketching things out that will that's always faster than CAD just by hand. But certainly, nobody uses a T-square and, uh, and all that sort of thing to do technical drawings, like accurate technical drawings anymore. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'll often draw things out by hand before I try to do it another way.
Okay, so we've been at it for now an hour and a half. So now up to you. <clears throat> Probably wrap it up. And... Yep. Um, I said an hour because I figured yeah I would be able to get at it that long, but it's yeah like the questions are becoming a little bit less interesting and repetitive. Do you guys waste a lot of time watching YouTube? I waste a lot of time reading comments on YouTube. Uh, not to say that the time is wasted, but I spend a lot of time. Uh, I watch a lot of people's videos just out of curiosity, not necessarily because I'm a fan. I tend to quite often play them fast forward. And I often have my finger on the right arrow key just to skip forward. This is where faster, faster internet would be handy because if you skip forward right beyond what's buffered, then there's a huge delay. So I'm always watching like how much is buffered ahead in terms of skipping forward. Um, and when I edit my videos, I try to save people the trouble of skipping forward by doing it for them. <sighs> okay, yeah, things are really deteriorating here in terms of comments. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thanks for watching, guys. But uh, I think we will end it now. So I'll just. It's been fun. Yep. I liked it. Oh, you weren't so looking forward to it. I was nervous about it, you know. Yeah. Okay, so I'm hitting the button now. Wow. That was better than I thought it would be, actually. Yeah, yeah. And so we managed to get through. Uh, so let's see. Stop streaming. Okay, actually, I think that should. I don't want to hit that button just in case there's stuff in the queue, but it should show. And I don't want to quit this yet, but I'm pretty. Stop recording. Oh, wait. No, we haven't stopped. I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> okay, stop streaming. This time for real. <laughs>